Warning! It's that time again. Time for another rape poem. The audience sighs just back in their seats. Oh boy, you say these bitches are about to go off. Off about rape and pain. And no, I said no, he, he didn't, didn't listen. listen. And you ask, why another rape poem? Did didn't I just hear like three of these? Yeah. You probably did. Unsurprising in a country where someone is sexually assaulted every two minutes. Oh. What's surprising is the shit people get for telling their stories. They are all lumped into one category. Right, Paul? As if trauma is a trope. Violation of cliche. Otherwise, you sit back and ask. Why so many damn rape poems? We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if America had listened Listen the first time. <laughs> These poems are our prayers to beat the fucking odds in this country of apple pie and roofies. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if our bodies were ours alone. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if everyone knew what no meant. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if Budweiser stopped selling our bodies stretched across the six pack. And maybe we Rape poems if everyone would listen to this one. But it seems to us these lessons have yet to be learned. Don't tell me she was sober enough to make a decision. Don't tell me she was asking for Don't it. Don't tell me to pity him for making for consequences. Do you complain about another rape poem? But this is all part of a culture. The, the rape, rape poems will continue until I can wear whatever the fuck I want without being called a slut. Until I can trust my drink to someone at a party when I need to take a piss. Until I can walk alone on dark streets and not be catcalled. Who's your dad? Get back over Ow, here. Ah, damn, look at that ass. Until I can wear heels without being asked who I'm trying to impress. Until my voice speaks louder than my outfit. Until I'm not expected to carry pepper spray on my keychain. Until no really means no. Until rape means crime. Until, Until woman means human. The rape poems will continue. Until there's no damn material left. One of my friends was sexually assaulted uh, my sophomore year, and he got some amount of support from this campus, but not a lot. Uh, most of what I hear on a regular basis is just the emails that we get or the, the um, things like that that are just like, you know, someone was raped or there was an accusation of sexual assault in different places, but it's not something that's like right in front of my face. I mean, I think victim blaming at Emory happens in some pretty covert ways. Um, I don't think it's necessarily done by the institution, although some things that we see from Emory as a whole, uh, like the security notices that we get after instances of sexual assault or violence, um, do contain some inherent victim blaming aspects. But I think the way that victim blaming really presents itself is in the heteronormative context, if a girl is assaulted or is victimized in some way, um, people of both genders, of all sexual orientations, will pretty much almost always bring up the question of what was she doing with the person who victimized her, uh, what was she wearing, why was she drinking that much, um, which are pretty standard forms of victim blaming across all communities, especially college campuses, um, and I think that's something that really does occur at Emory. This environment where like if you're a female who happens to dress seductively that you're putting yourself in that environment when really you're just expressing yourself in the fact that someone else has the feeling of being able to do what they want with you just because you're dressed like that is inappropriate. I think everyone should be aware of like its existence and like what they can do to prevent it and like if they're ever in that scenario like what to do to protect themselves. One thing that I have been looking at with sexual assault peer advocate SAPA um, is how we can rephrase the wording in that um, to you know, caution the university, caution its members, um, because there are ways to mitigate risk, uh, but really the only way to prevent being assaulted is to stay in your room, lock the doors, and never come in contact with another human being. People try to blame victims because they don't want to believe that there's something wrong with the culture that they live in. They don't want to believe that the way that they have constructed their society is in some way wrong. That 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 like the way, maybe the way we raise boys is like not a good idea or is conducive to like hyper aggressive, hyper masculine people who are going to think negatively of women or 
have have warped opinions of women or have warped opinions of sex or warped opinions of gender or what have you. This is tricky. I, I don't know the best way to answer that question. I think that's a really complicated question that requires a complicated answer. Helping everyone become aware that like it exists and like clearly defining what it means. The, the university has to be willing to support the victims of rape and be willing to punish the people who are assaulting people. Depending on the gender you identify with, you have a certain conception of what rape is and you have a certain conception of um, your position that's that's sort of pushed onto you in, in terms of, of rape culture. I think that men, typical cisgendered straight men are considered to be the typical perpetrators of rape, whereas cisgendered females are considered to be the victims of rape. But I think that depending on where you fall within the middle ground of those genders, you, you have a completely different conception of rape. I think people should empower the victim, not blame them. Uh, people should be encouraging to victims. I mean, I that was that was I took a class when I was in high school about you know what do you do if your friend is sexually assaulted and like the first thing is you never tell a victim of sexual assault to do anything. As a as an advocate for survivors, my initial response would be blame the perpetrator, uh, which you know that's that's pretty cut and dry, and I don't think that will generally be the attitude in our lifetimes. Uh, but the only person who is responsible for perpetrating an act of violence against another human being, whether it's sexual or any other type of violence, is the person who's committing the assault. Um, someone murders somebody, shoots them point blank. You don't blame the person for standing in front of the gun. You blame the person shooting.